Recently, I took a picture of the Cocoon Nebula with the Orion Eon 130mm refractor. It was a fantastic picture, but I was wanting a wider field of view to get that dark vein of dark matter that's trailing off from the nebula. So what's the result? The Orion 0.8 reducer flattener for the Eon 130mm scope. I'm Pat Prokop. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. You know, if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe to my channel. I do everything about that I know about uh, uh, for astrophotography in my own backyard. I call it the Heavenly Backyard Garden because it's in a garden and I'm shooting the heavy heavens. So the Heavenly Backyard Gardens. And also, if you have any comments, please leave them below. I try to answer all the comments that you all send to me. And if you have any topics that you would like me to make a video on, you know, please let me know. And I'll put them in the hopper and I'll take a swing at it and see what happens. <laughs> so, on with the show. Well, you would think the easiest way to do this would be just to take off the camera, like so, and put on the reducer, like so. But it doesn't work that way. This has one different uh, care that you need to do first. And to do that, you have to do a little bit of maneuvering with the refractor. And that is this collar right here. It's a 30 millimeter collar and you need to take that off, otherwise you'll never achieve focus. So, the first step is to take off the collar. That's a little bit tricky. Uh, it takes a little bit of strength as well to get it sometimes loose from the uh, uh, ribbing here. So, let's try to loosen it. I pre-loosened it actually. And it just comes off. It's gonna take about 10 turns at least. You take this off. You can see I got my reduce my um, focuser on here as well. I'm going to leave that on. There it goes. It comes off. Now this right here is the 30, 30 millimeter collar that needs to be taken off. And if everything goes right, it will just unscrew. It might be a little tight with the ribbings in there, but uh, sometimes you have to play with it. But I was able to get this one off. And you just simply take this off, like so. Again, this has about 10 turns, 10 to 12 turns. There's the collar right there. And here's the uh, focus tube assembly. So now the next step is to put the collar down and just screw it back in. Easier said than done, but let's do that. Okay. I got it already, that's pretty good. All right, that's three, four, five, six. Well, it's only six turns, maybe it's seven turns. Okay, I can adjust this if I want to. You don't want to make it too tight, just finger tight. Okay, we'll get that later. Next thing, you want to take your reducer and this end screws into this end, but first another step is needed. We have to re take off the nose piece. Like so, and catch it when you, when you drop it. Then you take the reducer, and you screw it in. Like so. All right, that's in. And then the next thing you do is you put your camera on, but it's important that you have the back focus of 55 millimeters from here to here. And so this is measured here. 
um, and it, 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 I got it measured out to be 55 millimeters. And you just screw this on the reducer. What's nice about this is you get a nice solid light train or image train. So there you have it right there. And it's ready to go. That's all there's to it. <laughs> Quite a bit actually, but that, that's, that's how I did it. I've changed the focal ratio of this telescope from f7 to f5.6 or the uh, focal length now uh, 910 millimeters to equivalent 728 millimeters. So that gives me a much wider field of view. So let's take a look at the reception uh, from last night when I was out here actually doing this and I was on the Cocoon Nebula and let's check out the view. And while I was at it I figured well I got Nina up and running and it's so easy to program Nina uh, after I get five hours of the Cocoon Nebula which will be streaking, streaking across that portion of the sky uh, northeast to high over north to northwest I was able to say to the telescope mount the EQR6 Pro swing around and let's catch the Pleiades. It's now rising early in the morning. So let's go upstairs and take a look. Nina and type in IC 50, 5146. I think that's the uh, Cocoon Nebula. There it is right there. And we'll set to a framing. And there it is. Now, yeah, yeah I, I want to get this dark matter. It's called Bernard 168. And uh, uh, so I want to move this over here a little bit more. So, and then let's recenter the object here in Nina. All right, there you can see that area of trail of dark matter that I'm after. So let's use this. So let's um, uh, go ahead and slew and center the target. So what, what um, the telescope's going to do now, Nina is telling it to slew to this target. And uh, so let's go into imagery over here. I had it on the Omega Nebula just before this. So that, that's the Omega Nebula right there. Anyway, we're slowing to the target right now. Well, there it is over there, just where I said. This is the reverse because it's on the other side of the meridian. But there's that trail of dark matter right there um, that I want to get. So, the uh, telescope is going to fine tune itself right now. It's probably going to move the nebula just a little bit. Let's see if it comes down or up. There it is right there. Okay, that's what we said uh, to do. So now, we can go into the framing. Go into add target to sequence. Uh, let's just do the simple sequence. That works just fine. Uh, by the way, this is Nina Nightly Build 1.11, uh, number 137, but they just uh, pushed a new one uh, out, which I did not download yet. It just it was just pushed. So going into, we can do this. We can go into um, set up the uh, say uh, an hour's worth. I'm going to go five hours. So that's sixty. That's a five. That should be a six. Sixty, sixty images at 300 seconds each that's going to be five hours and um, I'm going to bend uh, uh, bending is one by one I'm going to dither every frame the gain is going to be the default unity gain on the uh, ASI 071 camera which is 139 and there's no offset on this camera so we'll just put that at zero all right and I have it already slewed to the target, so I'm not going to do that. I've already focused it, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to start the auto guiding, and uh, the camera is already uh, cooled. And uh, let's see what the camera temperature is here. Um, the camera already down to minus five Celsius, so we're good. Uh, back to the sequencer, and I think everything's ready to go. Uh, the um, when the sequence is done, I'm going to tell the Nina to warm the camera, and then after it's warm, park the mount, and then uh, say good night, and it'll do that. Unless hmm, I want to get the Pleiades, uh, I'm going to program it 
to get the Pleiades after the Cocoon Nebula goes behind the trees. I'll have the camera or the telescope swing around to the northeastern sky and pick up the Pleiades. So let's uh, hit run and uh, off to the races we go. And we already started our exposure here. Our first um, five minute exposure will be coming in shortly. Now last night while I was recording the image I'm going to show at the end of the program here, um, which came out really good by the way, uh, I was fighting clouds. Uh, this band of cirrus clouds to my south, by the way, I'm located right here. This is my location right here. Uh, this band of cirrus clouds was scraping my area. So I was looking through some thin clouds during the night last night and my guiding was off just a little bit because you could see where it was going in and out of the clouds. Let me show you. You, you, you could see that the uh, the uh, light from the stars and the uh, star illumination was, was dropping a little bit at times and that was affecting the tracking and of course the imagery as well. So it was not a perfect night for observation but tonight uh, we got a uh, crystal clear sky tonight. Uh, those cirrus clouds are well to the south of us right now, so I'm looking pretty good. Um, let's take a look at another satellite image while I'm here. Um, uh, let's see if I'm on my website here, savannapat.name. Let's go to this one here. Uh, this has a couple of extra features on it. First of all, let's zoom in one notch here. And... Uh, you can see it looks like a clear sky here, but I'm going to go to this thing called the proxy visible, which is really good at night. And uh, believe it or not, this is, you know, it's now 10 o'clock at night, so it, you know, I'm totally dark out here. But look at this satellite imagery. I mean, it, it is really nice, this new GOES uh, satellite image um, showing this clear, clear, clear sky. You can see right down to the surface. So I got excellent seeing conditions for tonight. The moon is just setting now in the western sky, so the moon's out of the picture. So there's all the cirrus clouds to the south of me, but I'm doing okay here. Again, I'm located right here. I can zoom in one notch even more. I mean, you can see the lakes in South Carolina and Georgia, uh, some of the rivers as well. There's the Ogeechee River going up uh, and, and some other lakes around the area but I'm right here um, and the um, as you can see it's it's crystal clear so let's go back to the imagery here we're up to what uh, we just took a picture that's it all right the guiding pretty good um, it's doing a dither right now uh, but I'm doing pretty good on the guiding um, let's just Take a look at the picture itself. There you can see the the nebula there and that dark matter there. Barnard 168, a trail of dark matter. Now it looks like I'm got a, getting a little big netting. Is that how you pronounce it? Big netting? Big, big netting uh, on the edges here. Um, but the, the flats will take that out. Certainly the flats will take this out. So not an issue there. Um, I think that's from my filter drawer that's causing this right here. Uh, I have a, a Bader, oh, let's see, UVIR cut uh, filter in the uh, scope right now on the filter wheel. A filter drawer. Now, it's not a wheel, it's a drawer. So there's the raw image. And there it is stretched right there. All right, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. And I'll be getting the, uh, the Pleiades after this. Let's take a look at those final pictures. This is a fine telescope, the Orion Eon 130mm uh, apochromatic triplet refractor. And with the reducer flattener, it, well, you really don't even need the flattener with this telescope to begin with, but the, the reducer co does come with as a flattener as well. But, I mean, it's been flat from end to end, top to bottom with and without the reducer, but the field of view and the speed of the F point, the F5.6 really helps things out a lot. Uh, I, you know, I have learned so much from watching other people YouTube videos 
that I, I'm just hoping that I could be part of that chain of improving knowledge from the beginner astronomer to the intermediate astrophotographer and someday maybe I'll even get up to that advanced level. I'm working on that. And remember though, the heavens are just filled with majestic glories all around you and all in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies everyone. <laughs>